So we're gonna be focusing on the best controller and graphic settings for console. The first thing we'll focus on is details and textures. This is something that I normally have on. If you are having laggy, stuttery stuff, maybe on your old gen, you might wanna turn that one off. World motion blur, we're gonna go ahead and turn that one off so we can go ahead and get a little bit of a clearer image. As you can see, on the left is with it off and on the right is with it on. Weapon motion blur, exact same thing. Film grain off, depth of field, off. When you have it on, it kind of gives it this blur effect when you're aiming down sight for other areas that you're not focused on. And then this is one of the ones that I highly recommend turning on. You can turn on Fidelity FX Cast and this on, and you want to go ahead and try and put this anywhere between 50 to 100. Um, it kind of just adjusts your sharpness, which makes it a little bit easier to see. Some people might prefer it at 50, 75, 100. It is a marginal difference. It's like you're making marginal changes across the way. So it's not like there's this exact number because it will come down to preference. But I definitely would recommend this because it does make it a little bit easier to see on the map. Uh, obviously, if you have a 120 refresh rate, you're gonna want that on. Field of view. This is one that kind of gets controversial, even though it really shouldn't be. At the end of the day, uh, the, the pro players in Call of Duty usually range between around 95 up to about 105 for multiplayer. A lot of times for Warzone, people run at 120. So you can really run at whatever you want. Keep it in mind that as you zoom that out, targets become smaller. Aim assist will feel weaker, even though it's the same, because the targets actually shrink. So you kind of want to balance that out. I normally do 107 because on the big map, Targets get a little too small. It gets kind of hard to spot people. So that's my preference, but usually anywhere between 95 up to about 120, you're good. Obviously keeping in mind that as you get to 120, it'll zoom out a lot further. And you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and go affected FOV. And this will get rid of some of the visual shaking that you normally get to give the illusion that it recoils a little bit easier to control because you don't need to make as big of adjustment. But keep it in mind, it will be a smaller target. Independent is still perfectly fine because it'll give you like a huge zoom effect uh, if you keep it on that. That's kind of the standard console before that. A uh, weapon field of view, I have that as default. A uh, third person, I have it set to max. I haven't really played third person much. We got the first person camera movement, the least, uh, which is 50% for third and all these down, third person ADS. So this is a new setting that they added between uh, the beta and the launch of the game. You can actually still keep the old way if you prefer, where you'll be able to first person on any optic or any uh, ADS that you make versus third person ADS, which is specific for um, the, the optics that you use. So cool that at least they give you that option. So if you preferred the old way versus the new, you're good to go. Default spectator cam. They actually added the game perspective. You could do the helmet cam if you want that different feel, especially for one life game modes when you're spectating. And obviously once we get to war zone brightness, I keep that kind of as default 50. And then uh, depending on your monitor, you can make adjustments. And then safe area, I usually make this as small as possible because what'll end up happening is your mini map will be brought in a little bit closer. So that little white line that you're seeing on the top left, that will make it where the edge of the mini map basically is. So that'll put it all the way in the corner of the screen pretty much as far as it goes. So when you're focused on the middle of the screen and then you gotta look up, you're looking all the way to the corner corner of your screen versus when you bring this in a little bit tighter, it'll bring that a little bit visually closer so your eyes can still look at the mini map, get that information as you're going through. So pretty cool setting there. But there's another big one. Obviously you can go through all these. These are gonna come down to preference, but the color customization is a huge one. Uh, we'll go ahead and show right here as well. So we've got menu text default, text chat default, text background. These are all like whatever you wanna put at. But color customization, these filters, I'm not sure why they didn't name them, but they're basically very similar to what you've seen in these, which is the normal colorblind settings that a lot of times people will go with to kind of adjust those. I usually leave that default but the filter that I like is filter two and for both. If you only put it to interface, the, the world is a little bit darker. If you like a little bit more vibrance, the, the best thing you can do is add it to world. It's very subtle, but it is there. If you want a little bit more punch to your game, you can see how automatically when I swap, it makes it a little bit more vibrant for all of those different features. So you can kind of have it dingy, light color, power color, 
and, and you kind of got the, the balance there. So that one's a huge one. And then you can kind of customize your individual settings. Then we got some pretty standard stuff. We got the square mini map, rotation on, crosshairs on, hit marker visuals on, damage base hit markers on, abbreviated names, or you can go full name or icon only. Um, you got fade after five seconds on the, the HUD, the telemetry, you do have that. So if you want to see your packet loss, your clock and your uh, server latency, what kind of ping you're getting, uh, because obviously with skill-based matchmaking, ping is not key. Um, and then we got the different tool tips and, and those types of things. That brings us to the controller settings, which are pretty straightforward, but they've given us a lot of different options. So we got the first thing, which is edit button layout. But before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and show flipped. What this does is it allows me to go ahead and aim down sight and shoot with my L1 and R1. Um, so if that's more of a preference thing, it helps with semi-auto guns for some people, but it really depends. So you got tactical, which makes it so that your R3 becomes your drop shot. If you want to go ahead and do that, you have also bumper jumper, which allows you to jump with your bumpers. So if you want to bunny hop, even though that was heavily nerfed, and then they also have bumper jumper tactical, which combines both of those. Uh, and, and then obviously if you have a controller with paddles on the back, you will have that option as well, which obviously I have a scuff. So I do have paddles. I took off two of the paddles to go from four down to two, just cause it's a little bit more comfortable and preference. They added this other option where you can go just to the top and you can do a custom alt, where literally you could program each individual input for all of these different buttons. So you have, they, if your layout does not exist, you will have one there, which is an awesome feature. And then obviously, like I said, I do flipped, I use default for stick preset. Obviously, if you have a preference towards something else, you can. Vibration, I normally turn that off. Haptic feedback off. We do horizontal and, and vertical stick sensitivity. I'm gonna put out a video talking a little bit more how to get the best aim possible. I'll break down these. For the average person, you're gonna probably sit between about four and nine. People do like it a little bit faster. They can go above that. But usually if, you, if you're struggling and be like, ah, I can't really control it, usually lower your aim sense. Uh, and then if you want if you want to be a little bit faster, you can kind of bump that up and you can combine that with the ADS sensitivity multiplier. And the key is when you're moving around the map, you should be able to be fairly accurate with whatever this sense is, meaning your where you put your crosshairs is very accurate as you're moving around um, and, and you have good hip fire control. This one is once you aim down sight that you're able to move onto the target. I like it a little bit slower so I can go ahead and adjust and you, you take advantage of that sticky aim, which we'll talk about in that video as well. Sensitivity multipliers, if you want to adjust those individual things, you can. And then we have vertical aim access. So these are all standard for me. Um, if you want to go ahead and change those, you can definitely do that. Aim down sight is hold. Automatic tack sprint. I'm not sure if this is something I'll stick with because of the way the movement's been nerfed. You're gonna get caught sprinting a lot. So for most people, I'd probably say turn that off, but then that can destroy your controller. I'm still figuring out which one I wanna use for this game. I think auto sprint is probably gonna be the way to go because if you get caught tack sprinting, you're just mostly dead for the most part, especially in this game for how fast the TTK is. Equipment behavior hold activation. I use ADS and melee. Um, if you're just want double ADS, you can go ahead and do that as well. Or you just do regular ADS, but then you'll be clipping on walls everywhere. I almost never accidentally mount uh, on anything. And then interact tap to reload. We might change this to a form of contextual tap prioritize interact when we get over to war zone but currently it's a little bit easier just to do tap to reload then armor plates you do have the option to apply all then we got to tab over to the advanced section which is pretty straightforward target aim assist you want this on and then we got aim assist type we have default precision focusing black ops default is generally the way to go or black ops you do not want to do focusing or precision unless you're trying to quick scope and you're trying to drag your crosshairs and get that super sticky aim but you will not get it really any rotational aim assist with those so you kind of want to go ahead and go with the default which will give you the rotational aim assist which is kind of the more broken part of aim assist and i typically go go with dynamic there are people that like linear or standard but dynamic is probably most used um beyond just using standard it, it goes standard because that's what most people have by default dynamic, and then there are a few people that use linear. ADS sense multiplier with focus. This is when you hold your breath. I usually keep all that stuff default. You get custom sensitivity per zoom. You can go ahead and change that as well, but you can go ahead and keep it at 0.8 on everything if you want or 0.85, and then you're good. And then you get dead zones. And then here's where it gets a little bit tricky, right? You can go ahead and go through and you can um, lower this until you don't have any stick drift. 
Um, and normally maybe use it one more above for the movement one so that you're always having a little bit of movement so you can get the rotation aim assist. But if that bothers you, just go back one down. If this gets above probably around 10 or 12, it might be time to get a new controller. Um, the right stick, you want to kind of do the same thing where it's not really moving on its own. Even though this controller is about six months old, don't really have much stick drift beyond the brand new controller feel. And then the left stick max. What happens, this makes your movement feel a little bit more responsive if you lower this down from the 99 to 75. You could lower it even more, but then you it'll get a little bit wonky how you feel it like you're moving around. Right stick max, we just go ahead and put that on so that we have that full smooth control. And then the, the button dead zones, I have those as low as possible. Tactical sprint, toggle, and then auto move forward off. Double tamp for tactical sprint behavior. And then and this is if you didn't have any of the auto stuff on. Obviously, you would have to use it this way. I have ground mantle off, airborne mantle off, automatic ground mantle off. And then vert slide and dive. I have it set to standard. You could swap them. Plunging the water, movement, regular, plunge freely. And then we got parachute auto deploy on but we'd probably do that off in the future um this one just so that if you're jumping off a building you're not sure if you can make the landing probably go ahead and get it to safe uh, and then we got door bashing on you could actually turn that off so you would have to do it a different way combat behavior all this off off weapon mount delay medium depleted ammo switch on that'll switch to your secondary quick c4 detonation normally the the standard behavior for this one is off what you do is you double tap reload and it'll automatically make the c4 go off if you like hitting the same button then you can go ahead and just swap it over so you get used to it that way but that one again is preference short delay uh free look pinwheel delay moderate and then double tap danger ping delay um, there you go. So you can ping enemies and that's the graphic and controller settings. Hope they help you out. Appreciate all the support. Thank you for watching as always. Have a great day.